Hello everyone, my name is Aditya, along with my co-host Aishwarya, and our returning guest for the fourth time, <laughs> Mohammed. And welcome to the Mobile UX podcast, where we cover interesting web technologies and communities. So, for today's uh, podcast, we're going to be covering um, Flexbox, and more in specifically, we're going to be talking about align content and align items and align self. These three things, people often get them mixed up, what they're supposed to be doing, what they're mm -hmm. meant for, and stuff like that. So we're just going to clear the air around that, give you exactly what you should be using when. Uh, after that, we're going to be talking about how we used Flex Wrap and other Flex properties inside of Capybara to improve some UI inside of the sidebar for mobile and desktop view. Yes. So to get started, our first topic, uh, our main topic for the day, which is Flexbox. So it, within Fle Flexbox is a tool that's in CSS. It's been in CSS for quite some time now. And it's meant for uh, aligning and arranging items, elements inside of your template in kind of a responsive and uh, what's a good way to say it? Kind of just a neat way and it makes it easy for you to position stuff left, right, center, up, down, bottom, center, stuff like that. In, in short, the template. flexible way. <laughs> yeah, it's a flexible box. Literally, it's a flexible yeah. box inside of your um, Dom. template. Dom, yeah. So to get started, we have a few properties we want to cover before we jump into detail about align items, content, and self, just to make sure everybody has context of what we're talking about. Uh, the main things that people need to know about when arranging items inside of a flexible or flex box mm -hmm. is justifying content so and aligning uh, and aligning items I guess let's um, talk about justify let's talk about what it means to justify versus what it means to align stuff mm -hmm. um, oftentimes when working with um, new code like when you're jumping into code or when you've done a lot of it and there's a lot of different like complex CSS it gets hard to remember when you're work when you want to move stuff vertically around which property you should be using if you want to move it horizontally which one you should be yes. using so the best way to do that the clearest definition is think of your content as on axis on axes mm -hmm. justifying means the, it's you're talking about the direction that your flexbox is in. Mm -hmm. So flexbox by direction by default works in a horizontal direction. You can use flex uh, direction to choose that into a column too. Mm -hmm. So justifying is always the direction of the flexbox. So if that's mm -hmm. row, it's in the horizontal. Mm -hmm. If it's in column, it's in vertical. Mm -hmm. Then aligning stuff is on the cross axis. So if you have stuff that is if your flex is in the default uh, state, it's in a row. So you're cr when you're crossing that, you're going vertically. So mm -hmm. aligning is most of the time vertical. Uh, if you're using flex in a column, mm -hmm. you want to go with, um, at that point, you're, since your box is going vertically, you're now crossing it horizontally. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now you're, when you align stuff, you're moving it horizontally. So that's the difference between align, uh, aligning and justifying content. Um, just to find content, I'm just going to briefly go over it, uh, which is you can uh, choose to have your content to the left, right, and center, and you can choose to div you can um, use that property to um, decide how you want to distribute the space between the items. Yes. So not growing or shrinking the actual element, but the distance between the items. You can decide uh, there's like space between, around, and even so basically how to divvy up so now that we have justify and all its properties out of the way uh ashwari can you go into detail about all the different ways there are to align stuff in a flexbox yes so we have around three uh, ways how we align the uh, stuff in inside a flexbox container so let's start with align item so what happens with align items is uh, you uh, you can see that uh, the property name is items uh, so all the items inside that flex box will be aligned in the respect of the container. So there are few properties like align start. So all the items will be in the start of the flex box. Uh, similarly, for, uh, things will happen for the end. And if we align them in center, th so those items will be in center of the flex box element. So uh, this is around the all the items uh, which are the, the inside the container. So yeah. I have a question here, mm -hmm. like uh, you mentioned that align items will align the items based upon the container. 
so uh, this is simple if we have a single row of the items like suppose the direction of the flex is a row mm -hmm. that is horizontal mm -hmm. and uh, we have certain items in that row mm -hmm. so if we use align items on the container so it will align the items based upon that row yes now <coughs> I just want to understand what happens when when we have flex wrap. Man, mm. I mean, we have wrapped the flex and there are Multiple two rows. rows. Yes. Yeah. So how will that align items work in that case? Uh, very good question. Uh, so in uh, what happens when we wrap uh, the content? So the <coughs> layout will be like that. Items will be uh, coming one by one, and once the, uh, we have reached the height, uh, the uh, uh, next item will be on the, in the another row so uh, there are role of these rows inside the container and now uh, the alignment property will be re respecting the rows the space of that specific rows uh, for aligning the item so the items will be aligned based upon the height of the row yes not the whole height of height of the container very correct and uh, it's great that you uh, bring out this topic about wrapping the <clears throat> items inside a flexbox container so what happens when we have uh, actually wrapped the items uh, inside the container uh, there are multiple rows and now uh, there can be a scenario where uh, the height of the item uh, is quite less or depending um, there are uh, n number of heights of different items different items are having different heights so this management of space and the alignment is uh, very much needed that how we are going to align these inside of big flex box and we have multiple items multiple rows so uh, here comes the role of align content so this align content which is our next topic uh, helps the management of space between the rows of the flex box when there is wrapping we have introduced the wrap so the spacing of the rows will be handled with align content and uh, inside the rows the spacing of elements will be handled by the align items and uh, these are means uh, uh, differences between align item and align content where to use what and there's there's another interesting property of align self it's uh, it's nothing but uh, overriding the align items for a specific uh, uh, individual item okay so it will be applied on the item level. yes it will be applied on the item and it will be overriding the base property of the parent uh, i think uh, it's really important to be really conscious when you're using align self because if you've just used align self on one element but mm -hmm. then you don't give any property to the parent of the like the whole flex box yes. Def by default, all the elements stretch to fill the entire yeah. flex box in the cross axis. Mm -hmm. So if you just, but if, but then if you give uh, one item align self in any direction or any position, that then takes the uh, the height or the size of the actual element, yeah. the intrinsic size of the element. So say you have a height of. 50 in a parent that's like 100. Hmm. By default, everything's, if you don't give any align property at the top, you're gonna get 100 height elements. And you might be confused that when I'm giving um, align self to one, it's all of a sudden it's this weird size that I didn't expect because everything else is a different size. So it's really important to make sure or expect the, these different um, yeah. kind of gotchas when you're working hmm. with Flexbox. Okay, so uh, now uh, since we have mentioned align items and align content, yes, uh, I was wondering what happens if we uh, keep both as the center, like align items in as mm. a center and align content both as a center. So what will happen if we have multiple rows? Uh, so uh, the result will be very interesting. So the thing which will happen is uh, there are multiple rows, and uh, the spacing or uh, let's say the. Um, height of uh, the elements inside the container is uh, quite small uh, in with respect to the container itself so what happen uh, is uh, if we apply align content in center so the row multiple rows that are created will be in center and there is space uh, in the uh, starting and the end of the whole uh, container and the rows will be uh, clubbed in center and 
नाउ इफ वी आर अप्लाइंग अलाइन आइटम्स इन द सेंटर टू सो इन द सेंटर सेक्शन ऑफ द कंटेनर देर आर मल्टीपल रोज टू और थ्री रो रो टू और थ्री रोज एंड इन साइड दैट रो द आइटम विल बी इन सेंटर सो हाउ इट विल लुक इज we have three uh, uh, lines of the items and there is a sp- a little space between those uh, l- rows and there are a ho- lot more space in the upside and uh, in the starting and the bottom of the uh, container so uh, won't it be same if we just omit the align content in that case uh, uh, if we omit the align content Uh, the default property of align content is uh, stretch and uh, it will uh, give <coughs> equal size uh, uh, equal height uh, for the rows so what will happen is there will be equal distribution of space between rows in the content and uh, the uh, rows which were still the items will be in the center of the row right so yeah. Uh, I, about it like this. I think visually it will be same if we mm-hmm. remove the align content. Uh, uh, first, uh, align content were in center. Those rows were shrinked in between. Now they'll stretch uh, and have evenly distributed uh, space for items. Here's a easy way to kind of remember all of this: is um, align content and justify content. When you have the word content at the end, you're talking about like the all of like it's. Uh, Think about them as behaving in similar ways. If you remember in Justify, when we put something to the start, they by default all the space is taken out of between them, and they're all packed into this right. one side. Right. When you center, then they're all packed into the center. Well, Key word yeah. here is they're packed and mm-hmm. get together. So a, a way to remember the difference of what you can do with con- aligning content and aligning items is when you're aligning content, you're use you're moving the rows. in a similar way to the way you justify content. Yes. So you're packing them to the start, you're packing the rows to the center and you're packing the rows to the bottom. Yes, these are very uh, means uh, align content and justify uh, uh, content is very similar to each other. They are just applying on uh, different axes and uh, the properties are even the properties are the same. and how we manages them so that means the row height now becomes packed down to the smallest uh, not the small but like the element size yes, so whatever element. the base element uh, like the largest element inside of that row so um is there i'm sorry i if you had something i was going to move on uh, no i think uh, we have covered the align item align align content justify uh, content and these are the basic uh, properties how which align the items inside the flexbox container and uh, this is how we align so uh, i think we can um, move forward. i know. i think yeah yeah i think uh, since we have uh, discussed all this align content and align items uh I can just remember what happens in Bootstrap three. Yeah. When I when I was using Bootstrap three, uh, I guess now I know that why ha- they have introduced uh, flex, uh, majorly introduced flex in Bootstrap four. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, one uh, problem which I remember with Bootstrap three when I was working is, you cannot align your rows, uh, like you can do here in uh, with align content. Yeah. See. So yeah, that's one problem which I can remember, which which was. there with bootstrap do you mean you can't like dynamically um give like distribute spacing between yeah, the rows between the rows yeah okay so yeah so in that way i i think this is pretty <coughs> good solution to use flex so and that's why they i think they <coughs> used the flex in bootstrap 4 ashwarya i know um you for some uh project you did a while back you worked on uh, mosaic in one of your um uh websites hmm. so I know I know there's a lot of detail in that and maybe a lot of stuff you don't remember it was a while ago but do you want to go to uh some high level of how you were using flexbox to create mosaics I know it's a very popular pattern too that people are always googling uh, so I worked on uh, that mosaic 3 years ago and uh, uh, those were the time when we I was introduced uh, to this flexbox thing and uh, that this flexbox and bootstrap was very new to me I was learning and I applied these flexbox properties grow and shrink properties of the flexbox so how those um, elements will uh, gr- uh, manage uh, among them themselves and i've used some alignment uh, basic alignment property to align all those uh, sim- uh, inside that uh, container 
and uh, i also used uh, javascript uh, for uh, the better alignment and uh, better dynamic uh, viewing of uh, that mosaic because uh, as you said earlier that uh, uh, this wrap thing uh, gives us uh, flexibility to not to make uh, media queries breakpoint and uh, it will uh, automatically adjust the uh, whole flag items inside flag box uh, to the in, in respect to width of the device or the window so that was uh, some uh, challenges that i uh, was solving using these properties and uh, some javascript or jquery i'm sorry you may have already uh, said this but did you uh, did you mention any like uh big like headline flex properties that you use to get the mosaic working did you already mention that uh, no i didn't mention that but uh, i actually don't remember how i actually uh, made those item uh, uh, behave in respect to other things i remember i used a lot of uh, 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 jquery uh, to make them uh, uh, stretch and uh, uh shrink on the basis of mouse uh, like hover yes ho hover over them uh, f whenever uh, the user is hovers them it used to come out and uh, play a gif uh, it remains a image uh, basically and when the mouse gets uh, over it so the tile used to uh, stretch a bit and uh, uh, there was a gif that was a replica of that image which used to uh, play so that was so were you there. dynamically resizing the or like repositioning the elements around of it or were you just putting pulling it out into kind of like uh, no 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 i wasn't pulling it out uh, out of means like an overlay i was just uh, increasing the size of that uh, specific item and inside that item uh, the gif was playing uh, and on the mouse over yeah so you actually got the other images to move out of the way instead. yeah that was uh, that was the thing i was uh, f handling with jquery okay. uh, and uh, i think uh, simple mosaic is uh, easily designed on the using this uh, alignment of items uh, if we just need to take care of the height of the items and uh, either height or either w uh, width of the items then it's easily designable in CSS. Uh, all right, let's speed run through our MRs for today because we've spent a pretty l large chunk of our time talking about, um, whatchamacallit, Flexbox. Yes. Yeah, so um, Ashura, do you want to cover, do you want to introduce these or do you want me to go over them? Uh, no, this is a very simple um, thing which we uh, added in Capybara. The uh, filters are uh, aligned uh, vertically uh, and uh, they wasn't um, looking good only for colors. Uh, for other filters it was uh, good yeah, because they, uh, they have some content horizontally. Yeah. Uh, so what we uh, did is uh, we added a flex property and ra wrapped the, these uh, filters and uh, now it's looking better for the user and it's also easy to use now but yeah so this was a very easy one basically it was just basically what we talked about today we put these all into a flex wrap and mm -hmm. that was the end of it yeah we uh, i think we just also adjusted uh, uh, the horizontal margin uh, for uh, the colors for this mobile view yeah mobile view and so the same thing applies to desktop too kind of mm -hmm. because even on desktop before it was just you still have more space in desktop, but it still looks weird right. to look at them like this. Yes. So this and this all this is also in the Figma file too. I think their store their um, style guide. Okay. So this is something that and they've actually added a new component in SFUI called Color Picker, which is actually just this. Oh, so, nice. Nice addition to the SFUI library. Yeah. So we're just under the wire there. Uh, and then another thing, uh, mega menu closing. The problem was when we open the mega menu, it's technically an overlay. So when we click on other routes and the mobile um, version of the website on bottom navigation, especially for when we go to the profile page after opening the mega menu, it goes to that route, but the overlay doesn't uh, isn't closed uh, by by uh, isn't closed automatically. Um, yeah, so all we needed wanted to do was make sure all the elements at the bottom of the all all the routes in the bottom navigation close the mega menu. Hmm. Uh, so Ashwari, I know you um, 
we had a tool for this already so can you can maybe uh, yeah so basically these uh, mega menu and menu and bottom navigations are tools from uh, sf ui which we are using in kpbara so to use uh, what was happening is uh, some of the routes were uh, initiating the uh, close of the mega menu emitting the uh, mega menu close i guess only the home page route yes the home page route is only emitting that thing and uh, so only uh, that route was closing the mega menu uh, we just added uh, the uh, those emitting things whenever these routes are clicked and the menu was closing so here's just one thing that if we are using two or three tools combinedly and designing something then we uh, need to take care of uh, the proper communication between those uh, elements of the library yeah. so th this is was uh, just a simple fix for this and uh, it's uh, so this was something that already existed uh, yes. wh wh what is that was the name of that or like what is something that people can refer to to get that maybe they want to add another route to the bottom navigation so what would be that the thing that they would look out for uh it's uh, we are just uh, close menu uh, is a uh, uh, menu it's is just a ux the... action you need okay. to commit when yes. you when you click on any of the route and you have you i, I think we can see on the MR that he has just committed one action yes. like close, close menu. menu. So it's just a view thing, view X thing. Okay. You just need to call that action. So if anybody wants to customize the bottom navigation, if they want to add maybe a different route to it, mm -hmm. all they have to do is just go into, uh, whenever they add the route, just add this also with it. Yes, nice. to close the menu. Yeah, great. So that's all the merge requests that we want to cover for today. Um, great discussion about Flexbox and all the ways to move stuff or vertically, horizontally, and some nice additions to Capybara. Yeah. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mohamed, for joining us today. And usually we don't have any closing remarks, so I'm just not going <laughs> to ask today. All right. See you guys in the next episode. Yeah.